I'm addicted to journaling. If I have to be really honest with you, I am terrified. I am terrified. And I'm also kind of blind. The light in here is so weird. I am the kind of person who double checks emails five times before she sends it. And then right after she sends it, she goes back to reread it and notices a mistake. And she never forgives herself for that. It's, it's, it's a hard life. <laughs> Hello, welcome back to my channel. Welcome back to my channel. Oh, as you can see, I don't know if you can see all the books here. Um, I'm making a video about journaling. So I decided to gather all my journal books. And I think this is the first time I've actually like piled all of them up and I did not realize I had so many. I, I knew I had so many, but like, like when I stack them, I'm kind of crazy. Wait, <laughs> this is actually my finances book. This is not a journal, but like, and this is my little. This is me trying to draw. Oh my God! Look, I drew the Simpsons. Can you see this? This is another hobby of mine. I didn't talk about this. I like to. <sighs> I like to draw floor plans. Because when I was younger, I would daydream dream about the kind of house I would live in when I was older. So I would always draw floor plans so I can imagine myself walking around the house. So I draw a lot of floor plans. I'm not going to show you too much. But like, you know, if you can see. Wow. Okay. So this is not a journal, but this is a journal. Wait, okay. I'm stuck in it. Whew. This is a lot. I am really into notebooks. This is my current book. This is my current journal book. And uh, this is a book I write random things that I learn about myself. Oh, this is not even all of it. I'm missing something. Oh, my gosh. oh this. And this is my quotes book. My personality book, my quotes book. And these are all my journals. Oh, I could work out with this. Like these, uh, these are all my journals. Um, I'm addicted to journaling. I am definitely addicted to journaling, but you know what? I'm working on it. I'm working, I'm working on it. I'm working very hard on it. I have a whole script prepared, okay? Cause I can't really do anything without a script. I'm gonna blank out and I'm gonna be completely useless. Um, hello, welcome to my channel. Today I wanna talk about journaling. Okay, so first I am gonna tell you about my experience with journaling and then i'm going to give you some advice if you are trying to get into the habit of keeping a journal because who best to ask or who best to advise than someone who's addicted to it but i'm not gonna get you addicted i'm not gonna get you addicted if it's hard for you to start and i'm addicted and I'm the one convincing you or helping you, then you can probably come somewhere in the middle and the middle is healthy. So I'm gonna get you there in the middle, in the healthy ground where you can journal. Okay, let, let's, let me follow the script, let me follow the script. So I remember when I was in elementary school, I think this was when I was in grade five, I got this cute little journal entry book. It looked something like this. Uh, and it was probably pink or purple maybe it even had flowers on it and I remember it had a padlock and I had a key for it and I had the key on my regular keychain with my house key and I wanted to write in it every single day like you know like keep a diary it was it was a diary it was like a little dear diary thing and I'll be like dear diary this is what I did today blah 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 I have a crush on this boy 
I didn't really have crushes at that time, but um, Dear Diary, my friends pissing me off, blah, 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 you know, so I wanted to do that. Um, but of course, it was hard to write in it every single day because that's like, that's like work, that's like a chore, that's like forcing yourself to. So I couldn't really keep up with that. And also, I think I actually only wrote in it a few times, like probably like a couple of times. And then one time, I left it somewhere in my house. <sighs> and my mom found it. And um, let me just say, I was very honest in my little book in the way that will upset some people. So she was not very happy about what I had to write in there and she confronted me on it and I was very embarrassed and I felt very ashamed and I steered clear of journaling for a while plus the fact it was you know like work so the fact it was work and the fact that I got in trouble for it and felt shame from being so honest um, kind of kept me away from journaling but obviously not forever because how did we get here I think it was when I was in seventh grade or eighth grade and it was the end of the school year and I had a notebook that I would use for class but class was over and I had so many empty pages and I wanted to use that notebook that notebook probably looked something like This is the notebook. This is the notebook. Oh my god. So I think it was the end of 8th grade when I had this notebook. I think I was using it for some kind of class, some kind of like school related activity. And I was basically done with this for school and I had all these empty pages. And instead of throwing it away or recycling it, I'm like, I'm gonna keep this notebook and I'm gonna make this my little personal notebook and I'm gonna write whatever the I'm gonna write whatever the hell I feel like writing in it. And I actually started with recipes because I was really into baking when I was that age, when I was like 13 and 12 years old. So the very first page is actually Esther's chocolate chip cookies recipe. I wrote recipes for cookies and for muffins. Then I wrote my birthday wishes. I wrote some rules for myself because I was trying to save money. I had like no money. I was trying to save like five dollars. I was trying to save like five dollars a month. It was it was hard. It's hard being young. It's it was hard being a young child, having no money, having no job. Oh, I wrote some birthday wishes. I um I was kind of I wasn't. It, it's very sad. I was I was a depressed child. I'm, I think I'm happier now. But when I was young, it was hard. So my birthday wishes was, um, it wasn't something anyone should be wishing for. I wasn't, I was basically wishing not to be um, around anymore. So it's kind of sad. Okay. I swear it's gonna turn positive and it's gonna be happy. Okay, this is not gonna, this is not gonna have a sad ending. I, I swear. I wrote about my future plans. I have not looked at this in so long. Oh. I wrote about my future plans, like the years, like what I wanted to like get for myself. I wanted to get a job. I wanted to go to a certain kind of school. I wanted to move out. I wanted to get a laptop. I wanted... Oh, oh my God. I'm not even going to lie to you. I really lived up to a lot of my goals. I really lived up to a lot of the goals that I set for myself. And I am so, 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 so very proud. So this is probably why journaling is good because it holds you accountable. I wrote to rules for myself because I was concerned with how people perceived me and I just didn't want people to think, I didn't want people to think I was bossy because some people thought I was bossy when I was young. And I wasn't bossy, I was, maybe I was bossy. And this is the situation when people thought I was bossy. Group work, group work. It's my grade. I'm supposed to be concerned about my grade, you know. Usually when I was in a group with people for group work, I'm the one who's like very assertive because the other people, 
and not doing anything. I swear there was even one time when I'm like, I'm not gonna be bossy, I'm gonna stand back and I'm gonna let other people take leadership. They didn't have any ideas. In the end, they were just looking at me. They're like, Esther, that's what happens when I step down. So yeah, I had to be bossy, but I had to make rules for myself to be less bossy because when I was young, I really, really cared about what people thought of me and I just felt like people thought such negative things about me. I kept track of how much I was saving. I wrote a lot of depressing stuff because I was that kind of child. Um, I wasn't very happy. I wrote baby names. I wrote a whole bunch of baby names. I daydreamed a lot when I was young. I was always in my head. I was always thinking about my future because I was just trying to escape from the present life that I didn't enjoy so much. I was always daydreaming about my future with the floor plans, with writing the baby names. I would write random stuff that were usually sad when I was feeling kind of negative. I would also write my random thoughts about life and my theories and you know some philosophical stuff in there and of course when something really upsetting happened which happened a lot I would always go to my book my book I would call it my book and I would just write about it I'll just write everything that I was feeling and thinking, all the feelings that I was feeling, sadness, anger, frustration, jealousy, shame, guilt. I would feel guilty about the negative feelings I was having. And I would write everything in there, I would reflect. Because when I was young, as young as 13 years old, I didn't have anyone in my life that I felt comfortable enough to talk to. Um, I didn't have anyone in my life that I trusted enough and I was just going through really hard times and like I said I had no money that's part of the reasons why I couldn't really escape from a lot of things I was going through so I would just write and I would just reflect because writing really felt like talking to somebody talking to somebody without the fear and the worries about being judged being gaslit I hope that's right, gaslit. <laughs> Being gaslit. <laughs> okay, gaslighting without worrying about judging or gaslighting or blaming or shaming. I didn't want any. Imagine like expressing to someone about how bad you're feeling and that person is making you feel guilty or even worse for how bad you're feeling. I didn't have anyone that I knew for certain that I could go to talk to and they would not make me feel guilty about how I was feeling. So I would write and writing always felt like talking to somebody. So whenever I was done with writing, I would always feel a weight lifted off me and I always, I always felt better after. So it became a habit. In the beginning, I would write like every few weeks or so. And then as time passed by, I wrote more frequently when I was in high school and in university I was journaling multiple times a week almost every day almost every other day because um, yeah because that is how I dealt with life that is how I cope that was my therapy that was my escape that was my savior that is how I dealt with life I could judge myself about my own feelings which I did I did I wasn't you know see myself as this perfect person I would judge myself if I felt negative about something or someone and I feel like maybe I shouldn't be feeling this way I will be critical so yes I was very emotional but I was also very critical in how I was feeling but I did judge myself but in a safe safe place I would think as I would I would write all sorts of events that I went through, all sorts of experiences I would write, what happened, how I'm feeling, what I'm thinking, what I'm planning, you know, it was, it was, it was a lot. <laughs> so unlike when I was in elementary school and I was trying to force myself to have that habit and force myself to write in it um, daily, when I just decided to just make this my little fun book and write whenever I felt like writing, I naturally came to write in it frequently so that's naturally came I never had to really force myself there was never a time when I'm like I'm gonna do this I never did it for like the aesthetic or to please anyone or to seem like some kind of person it was always therapy to me journaling was always therapy to me so it was never something that I had to 
force myself to do because I felt like I had to for any reason so because of that it's just came naturally so when the notebook when my notebook my journal will get all filled up I will just go to the dollar store and I would buy another one I always I always got my journals from the dollar store I always bought something like this and I always bought um, something that had rings because <laughs> because I would always write on the bed on my bed um, in my room that I shared <laughs> um, and it was it was more comfortable because I could just like do this and then lay on my bed and write on it it was definitely more comfortable than something like something like this you know this is kind of small like I can't even imagine sure now in this but yeah I was always I would always write in something like this, something with rings, something with a lot of lines, a lot of pages. So I believe this was my first, first journal book. This was my first. This is my fourth, actually. So they were in between. And I'm actually missing one. I'm not missing it. I know where it is. I actually have it. I actually made a time capsule. It's not buried. Like, it's somewhere in my apartment. I have a time capsule where I... When I was in high school, I made a time capsule where I stored a lot of some random stuff I had at the time. And one of the things that I stored in my time capsule... Wait, actually... Actually, I don't think I have a journal in my time capsule. Never mind. I think it's here somewhere. So this was my first, first one. That's why it looks super basic. This is my third one. This is my fourth one. Yeah, you know what? I think my I think my second one, my second one is in the time capsule that I made that I stored a bunch of random stuff in. So this is number one. There's number two. Um, this is number three. Number four. Number four. Which one is number five? <laughs> okay, let's let me actually see the ending. Okay, so this one ended in August 2017. And this one began August 2017. So this is number five. This is my number six. This is number six. Okay. No, this is number nine. Never mind. Number seven. Okay. Is this one number eight? Number eight. Number nine. This is number 12. Oh, there. Number 10, this is number 9, right? Number 9, number 10. I'm missing one. Where's number 11? Oh! <laughs> I'm blind. Number 11. started using this to write poems and then um, and then I decided to start using it for entries because I I was in this this was during the pandemic the stores were closed I was desperate for journals yes that's what I was desperate for during the pandemic journals so this was all I had so I started using this to journal and so I stopped with the poem. Oh, I think there was baby names in here. I don't know those baby names. Okay. There was some very... Oh, Lord. Um, yeah, this is number 11. So this is number 10, number 11. And this is number 12. So I have 12. And I've been journaling for about 10 years. Since I was about 13. So about 10 years. Okay, so these are not journals, these are articles. As you can see, I like to write. I really like to express myself through writing. I'll say on average, I would go through about one uh, one book a year. The past few years, I've been going through books faster. Um, it started with some basic, some very basic books. And as you can see, it got cuter. This is my latest one, this one. There's still a lot of empty pages, so. This is my latest one and on the cover page it says you are here to do incredible things, brave things, bold things, 
things only you can do so it's a little cute little thing I don't, where did i buy this from i think i bought this from indigo well i really graduated from the dollar store didn't i so i got this from indigo and i really like this one this one says plans for world can you see it or not though? plans for world domination this one is just red <laughs> bloody red this one is just black this is actually a sketchbook i think this was also during the pandemic yes november 2020 this was during the pandemic i was in desperate need of journal book and i <laughs> and all i had was a sketchbook that i never i guess i never used it because i was kidding myself when i bought another sketchbook knowing damn well i am not an artist <laughs> Yeah, I still have a ton of pages that are empty in this sketchbook, but you know what? I do draw occasionally. Occasionally, I will go into it and then I will draw something. So, I do use it. Oh, look what I did! <laughs> okay, I'm not gonna show a close-up because it's not, it's not that great. I'm not an artist, so I'm not here to do that. So yeah, this is actually a sketchbook, so it's all black and it's all like blank pages that I decided to just... There are no lines, I decided to just visualize the lines and um, write in it. And I like to use colorful pens when I'm writing because it just makes life more exciting. Look, this is all flowers. See, I'm girly. It's all flowers, yeah. And look how thick it is. So when I'm buying journals now, I want something with rings because this is comfortable and I want something thick. So my ideal journal book would be like this because it's so thick. Ooh. Um, and it has rings, so it's comfortable. So look how pretty my journals got over the years. Look how pretty this is. Look how pretty, and I bought, I believe I bought these from the dollar store. For some reason, nowadays, I cannot find cute books at the dollar store. I used to find cute notebooks at the dollar store. Maybe it's just me. I was never a huge fan of the Taylor Swift. I have nothing against her. Um, and I listened to some of her music. Um, yeah, so this one has Taylor Swift on the cover um, for some reason. So we really went from basic, basic notebooks to something much more beautiful. So as I alluded to earlier, this habit of journaling became more of an addiction. I just felt like I couldn't go one week without journaling. Like if I went out of town or if for whatever reason I couldn't journal for one week, I felt I did I felt uncomfortable I felt uneasy so in the beginning journaling will help me lift a weight off I would always feel better after I journaled but it got to the point where when I didn't journal I would feel worse so kind of like withdrawal symptoms when you stop um, doing something or taking something <laughs> taking something that makes you feel good when you stop doing that you feel even worse without it so um, I realized this and I started really trying to reduce how much I journaled because I'm like I really I really need to chill this is kind of I didn't want to become too dependent on it and I felt like I was becoming too dependent on writing that's when I didn't write I just didn't feel too comfortable with it so in the past year I've been really trying to reduce how much I journaled of course, I am not going to stop journaling because I love it creatively. Like This is a big part of who I am. This is a big part of my life. I wouldn't feel like myself if I decided to just stop doing this. But of course, I have to reduce it because I don't want to be too dependent on like anything. I don't even want to be too dependent on coffee. And I pride myself in that. I pride myself in not needing coffee. I'm like, look at all these people that need your coffee every single day these addicts you know but i'm over here shaking if i cannot write for a week so yeah i don't think it's good to be too dependent or anything i'm not attacking coffee drinkers i really don't care <laughs> journaling is such a big part of my identity journaling to me is what going to the gym is to some people some people they love the gym they cannot give it up it's it's their place to be i don't think that will ever be me i've tried i've tried to make working out my thing working out to me is still torture um <laughs> yeah so journaling is my 
version of going to the gym. Journaling to me is what going to the gym is do for some people. Like I said, I've been journaling for about 10 years now. So if you want to get into the habits to a healthy capacity, I can give you some tips on it. Thank you so much for watching this video of how I got into journaling. Please watch my other video for the tips and advice I have to offer if you're trying to get into journaling. And please feel free to like, comment, and subscribe to my channel. And you will see me next time. Subscribe if you want to see more of me. And maybe next time you will see me.